the learning curve. As a prelude to this video, I must let you know that for the 12 days following my brain surgery on December 9th, 2019, I had not fully regained my memory. And as a result, my recollection of events is very sketchy. I remember that there was a mechanical device that literally helped me out of bed. Whether to put me in a wheelchair or to assist me in walking, I have no idea. But going around the nursing station, admiring the beautiful Christmas tree and decorations, I remember that. And I also have a recollection of going somewhere and admiring another tree on my way to have my first and second swallowing tests. There were two of these tests and I failed both times. I was transferred and I remember the date. I was transferred to Kentville on the 21st of December because they wanted to clear out as many patients as they could before Christmas. And they wanted their patients to be closer to home. So my home was closer to Kentville. So on the 21st, I was transferred. Now I can't remember whether it was day or night. I don't remember being admitted but I do remember when I woke up the following day, the 22nd, I was introduced to my physician who was, on a, who was finishing her uh, two week rotation. And um, she's the one that admitted me apparently the night before. And I met my physiotherapist, my occupational therapist. I met the new physician that would be taking over for the next two weeks. And um, I met members of the nursing staff. Now I figured my rehabilitation and recovery could begin. Daily physiotherapy, which included the mechanical lift from my bed to the mechanical walker, which I do remember, was my first experience of relearning how to walk, which soon became a walker. And for longer trips than around the nursing station, I had a wheelchair. Exercises to strengthen my legs and my balance were included in my daily routine. My therapist had me walking up and down stairs, showing me the safest way to do this in my condition. On one occasion, I was attempting to get off the floor because this was something that I was very concerned about. Um, I, needed to ha I needed to know the process of getting off the floor in case I fell. Well, the first time I did this, just trying to process all the steps that were required to get me from the floor to a standing position, I had my first seizure. My right hand started trembling and I was visibly in a seizure mode. My physiotherapist alerted the physician and the nursing staff that this had gone on. My occupational therapist gave me exercises to improve my memory, cognitive skills, and motor skills. As another activity, my husband and I spent many afternoons working on jigsaw puzzles to improve my fine motor coordination and my eye-hand coordination. 
by the 1st of February, the fourth and f f swallowing test was administered, and I finally passed. It was time to go to the Nova Scotia Rehabilitation Center to continue my journey. This happened on February 13th, 2020. All the time I was in Kentville and then the Rehabilitation Center, I had absolutely no awareness of the seriousness of my own brain tumor and the dire situation which I had been in. It wasn't until eight months later that my husband and I met with the surgeon and she revealed the MRI images for us to see. After being admitted to the seventh floor of the rehabilitation center, which is for brain injury recovery, I was introduced to my physician who, as in Kentville, was on a two-week rotation. My personal physiotherapist and my personal occupational therapist were introduced to me and they proceeded to put their schedules on my cupboard door. And uh, I was introduced to the dietitian and members of the nursing staff. And I was really impressed with the number of male registered nurses that are at the Nova Scotia Rehabilitation Center. Though not mandatory, it was highly recommended that I attend the Thursday sessions where patients were asked to introduce themselves and state the brain injury that brought them to rehab. Staff distributed information sheets and pamphlets to read and keep. As part of this session, we were introduced to former patients who came in to relate their progress. I remember two in particular. They were both stroke patients. The first one was a gentleman who returned to work after he was provided a quiet place and a time to rest midday before he resumed his work for the afternoon. The second was a nurse who was never able to return to full-time nursing, but was able to do part-time. We were given the opportunity to ask them questions regarding their long-term recovery. They were into the sixth and 10th year, respectively. We learned that an ABI is an acquired brain injury as a result of a stroke or a tumor. And a TBI is a traumatic brain injury, which is the result of a concussion or blunt force to the, to the head. Both of these have the same four effects of a brain injury, headaches, irritability, fatigue, and clumsiness. All these occur when the brain has used up the available energy required for healing. Did you know that the brain does not store energy? Unlike muscles, which can be worked and strengthened to store energy for further activities, the brain has a fixed amount that must be restored every 12 hours. I liken it to the new hearing aids that have a battery that must be plugged in every night to recharge for the next day. One of the most important lessons I learned had to do with the image of a pie chart divided into four equal sections. The first quarter, or 25%, of the brain's energy 
is for the vital organs that literally keep you alive. Blood pumping to the liver, to the kidneys, to the digestive system, everything, the heart. That's the first of your 25%. The next 25% is used for daily routine activities. They go on every day, like getting up, grooming, dressing, making the bed, preparing breakfast, making lunches if you go to work. All those things that happen on a daily basis take 25% of your energy. Then before a brain injury, you have half the brain's energy, 50%, that you can do whatever you want. You can go swimming, you can go to work, you can go shopping, you can go to a movie, you can go dancing, you can do anything, exercise, hiking, go, anything at all. You've got 50% of your brain's energy can be used for that. But after you have a brain injury, that's cut in half. You only have 25% left for activities because 25% is required for healing. Juggling this is extremely difficult and it takes a long time to figure out just how much your brain is used up in activities. If you expend all your energy allotted for activities, you're starting to rob the 25% that's required for healing. This is when the four effects of brain injury recovery kick in. Headaches, irritability, fatigue, clumsiness. They all hit at the same time. Several of the information pamphlets we were given were from Australia, entitled ABIOS. Acquired Brain Injury Outreach Service. Coping with fatigue. Getting a good night's sleep after brain injury. Cognitive and behavioral changes and strategies. And memory and learning after brain injury were four of the most important pamphlets that were distributed. These are all produced by the Queensland Health in Australia, and their title is ABIOS, Acquired Brain Injury Outreach Service. There is a wealth of printed resource material regarding brain injury recovery, but I have found if you Google YouTube brain injury or brain tumors, the list of reputable websites is endless. There are also many recovery stories on these sites. With your physician's permission, patients at the Nova Scotia Rehabilitation Center were able to go home for the weekends, returning Sunday evening. My first weekend home was very special as I hadn't been in my house since November 25th, 2019. We celebrated with lunch at our favorite fast food restaurant. We bought blinds for our home and I returned Sunday evening with my new butterfly-covered cane. It was time for my metamorphosis. I was discharged from the Nova Scotia Rehabilitation Center exactly one week before Nova Scotia's COVID-19 lockdown. My life will probably always include grab bars, stair rails, armchairs, but hopefully in time, my butterfly-covered cane 
and my Nordic walking poles will remain in the closet. <laughs>